Okay, uh, now we're going to go uh, back into that directory containing our water molecule, and we're going to set up an input file. Let's cd into my documents and calcs and h2o, and there's our files from last time. Job.xyz is this um, nicely optimized structure of the water molecule at the level of theory referred to as good opt. And now we'll create a new input file to calculate the wave function at a better level of theory for that particular optimized structure. So we'll enter the VI editor and we're going to call this new input file uh, DFT underscore energy dot INP. And DFT energy is the level of theory that we'll be using and it's actually a hybrid between Hartree Fock and density functional theory. Um, and here's how we'll do it. Again, it'll be a simple two line input file. Hit the I key to go into insert mode. Uh, I'm going to do exclamation point and then the key DFT dash energy. And this is the important thing since we're going to want to look at the electron pairs in the molecule. Um, visually, we're going to tell this ORCA program this time to write an input file for the program NBO, which stands for Natural Bond Orbital. And that's the theory that we'll actually use to interpret the wave function in terms of localized electron pairs according to Lewis theory. And in the next line, as before, we're going to tell we're going to do a star followed by XYZ file, and then zero for a neutral molecule, and one for all the electrons paired up, singlet multiplicity, singlet ground state. And then the name of the XYZ file now is job.xyz. That's the optimized structure that we calculated before. So this input file is pretty similar to the one that we created previously for the structure optimization, but this DFT energy keyword by default isn't going to optimize the structure. It's just going to give us uh, the wave function for the job.xyz structure that we already optimized, and it's going to create a, a file that gives us that's going to give us the opportunity to look at natural bond orbitals. Um, so now we're going to write this by going into command mode and typing colon wq. You can see that in the lower left of the terminal. That will write and quit this file. And if I do ls space dash lt, I can see all the files in that directory, and we have our new dft energy dot inp file there now. And so let's run ORCA on that file. We're going to go ORCA and then dftenergy.imp and then greater than ampersand and then the output file we'll call dft uh, underscore energy dot out and then ampersand and this will run the ORCA program on our new input file to get a high quality wave function for the water molecule at that optimized structure. So here it goes. Let's watch the progress. Tail dash dash f uh, dft underscore energy dot out. And this program is chugging along. And because the water molecule is pretty small, even though this is a pretty computationally demanding level of theory, uh, this won't take very long to complete gener generating the wave function that we're going to use. And it's all done. It took 27 seconds. No problem. So control C gets us back to the terminal. And ls space dash lt will list our files now. And we've got a bunch of new files that all start with the dft underscore energy prefix. And the, the one that you'll see uh, over here, dft underscore energy dot 47, that's the one that contains the information on the calculated wave function that we're going to use as input for the natural bond orbital uh, calculation. And first, before we do that, we're going to edit that file because it, um, 
we want to include an instruction in there for when it calculates the natural bond orbitals, uh, permitting us to visualize them in three dimensions so that we can see them and rotate them around. And so we're going to use the VI editor, VI, and it's going to be DFT energy, dot, and it's the dot .47 file that we're going to be editing. I'm going to do a little command here in VI, which is set new. Not working, no problem. I'm just going to bring my cursor down here to this line AONBO. That's the one that we're going to replace with the keyword plot. So I'm, I'm putting my cursor at the A and I'm hitting Shift D. That deletes everything uh, after the cursor. And I'm, I'm hitting uh, the A key to insert text. And I'm putting in just the word P-L-O-T. And I'm hitting escape and colon WQ. So that's the only change that needed to be made. We needed to get that plot command in there. These other keywords uh, are telling the program something about uh, the file that we're using, the prefix, DFT energy, um, and NPA stands for natural population analysis, and NBO is to calculate the natural bond orbitals, and plot will tell the program to go ahead and, and plot the, the natural bond orbitals as well as uh, other functions associated with this system. So we're doing colon, write, and quit, return. And so we've modified that file. And now the next thing to do is to run the program by using the gen NBO executable. And this you might want to pause the video to write down how this command is executed. It's gen NBO and then less than and then DFT underscore energy dot 47. That's the input file for the NBO program. This gen NBO is the standalone NBO executable. And then we do greater than, and uh, we're going to call the NBO output file uh, DFT energy dot NBO out to distinguish it from the ORCA output file. So uh, let's see how long this one takes. It ran pretty quickly and it's done. And let's look at all the files we got here. Now we've got uh, a lot of DFT energy files with number prefixes. If you open them up, they tell you what they are. So let's look at the one that's DFT energy.37. The dot thirty-seven file at the top of the file says that this is these are the NBOs in the atomic orbital basis. Okay, so this is uh, this this file contains a description of the orbitals. In order to know which electron pair you're going to be looking at, uh, you can look at the DFT energy dot NBO out file. So let's do that. Uh, more DFT energy dot NBO out because this contains a lot of the information that was generated in the calculation in summary form. You can see at the top of the, of the file that we're running MBO version 5.9 and you can see the appropriate citation that you should use if you're going to uh, publish results obtained using this program. And uh, we'll go down, I'm just hitting the space bar to scroll down while we're using more to view the file. You can see the, this section on natural population analysis. Uh, what I'm really going to do here is skip over most of this material and um, I'll show you just a couple of things. Here, here we see that this the system has a Lewis structure that consists of two bond electron pairs and two lone pairs. Um, no three center bonds and one core electron pair. So that's in line with the type of Lewis structure that we would generally write down for the water molecule. But we're going to be interested in getting more details about these electron pairs, the lone pairs and the bond pairs, to see what they actually look like spatially. Okay. Um, in, in this part of the output, you can see that um, we have a bond here between oxygen 1 and hydrogen 2. And 
that this bond is this this bond electron pair is 73% on oxygen and 27% on hydrogen and you can also see here that this the oxygen contribution to this electron pair bond is uh, 22%, 22.7% S, oxygen valence S in character, um, and 70, 77% uh, oxygen P in character, and uh, essentially no D orbital in character on oxygen as you would expect. And of course the hydrogen uh, is using its S orbital in contributing 27% to this uh, electron pair bond between oxygen and hydrogen. So we'll look at the bonds. Uh, they're they're going to be ordered in the order that they appear in this table. So if we looked at orbital number one, that would be that particular bond. If we looked at orbital number two, that would be the other OH bond. If we look at orbital number three, this is a core orbital, so we're probably not going to be interested in that. We're interested in the valence electron pairs for chemistry. And then uh, numbers four and five are the lone pairs on the oxygen. And you can see already you're going to be able to see in the output that these two lone pairs are very different from one another. And how do they differ? Well, this first lone pair has 0% oxygen S or atomic orbital character, but um, nearly 100% oxygen P character. And so the atomic p orbital on the oxygen houses th this lone pair of electrons on the oxygen. On the other hand, for the other oxygen lone pair, we have 54% s character and 45% p character. And so that is all uh, nearly an in, in, in equal mixture of s and p uh, mixing in forming the second lone pair on the oxygen. And we're going to see that uh, that first one that's almost all P in character is an out of plane electron lone pair whereas um, this lone pair that is a nice mixture of S and P character on the oxygen um, is in the plane of the oxygen and the two hydrogens and so we're going to want to look at those and those electron pairs are numbered four and five in the listing of all the orbitals in the system. These other label, other orbitals down here at higher numbers uh, some of these are called Rydberg orbitals. Those are extra valence orbitals, and they're not occupied uh, th with any electrons. So that's, that's most of what I wanted to show you in the output file for now. So I'll hit Q to get out of the MORE program. And now that we have the uh, .37 file that contains the natural bond orbitals, uh, we're going to be interested in looking at that using the program JMOL that knows how to read those files. So this is an excellent open source program, JMOL, and uh, we will launch the JMOL program. It's an open source Java program, so the system, your system needs to have a running Java in order for this program to work, and here it is. And so let's um, choose file open, and it's the .37 file, that contains the information about the natural bond orbitals. And so we're going to now be able to look at the spatial distribution of these electron pairs in the water molecule. So I'm opening that up, and I can see the molecule. I can rotate it. And uh, now I, c I can access information on the orbitals in a couple of different ways. I'm going to change the display. I want um, to right-click. I'm going to right click on the window and I can change the style of the representation here. Instead of balls and sticks, I just want, I think, the wireframe representation so that the, these balls representing the atoms and the sticks won't get in the way of looking at the, at the uh, three-dimensional form of the natural bond orbitals for the OH bonds and for the lone pairs of electrons. I can also zoom the molecule in and out uh, using the mouse. And if I if I hit right click uh, down here under surfaces, I I see molecular orbitals. These are being 
described here as molecular orbitals, but we know that they are natural bond orbitals. And uh, because we created them using the NBO program, start using the ORCA-generated wave function. So let's look at one of the two equivalent OH bonds in the water molecule first. We'll start out with the bond. Just click on number one. And there it is. So this uh, is showing a surface, an, an electron density isosurface uh, representation of, of this orbital. And you can see that uh, this, this orbital contains, um, would be, it looks like it results from the overlap of the oxygen P orbital with a node as you go from blue to red with uh, the S orbital on the hydrogen. So this nice uh, region of electron pair bonding right here, this blue region uh, representing shared electron pair bonding. If I want to change the way this is visualized, I, I right click again on the window, I can put up this thing called the console, and I can type in instructions such as MO space fill, which to me gives a nicer representation of the orbital to, to look at. And you can see uh, that th this is what an electron pair, shared electron pair bond looks like in the water molecule. I can also um, I'll close the console, uh, move up in our list, and examine the lone pairs, which is really part of the point of, of this exercise. And so let's go to surfaces and molecular orbitals, and we'll choose now. We know I'm not going to choose number three, which was the core we saw in that listing, but I'll choose the number four lone pair, and that one we saw had pure P orbital character on the oxygen, and so that's what it looks like. It just looks like an oxygen atomic P orbital, and it has no contribution from the hydrogens whatsoever because they actually lie in the nodal plane of this P orbital. And so this lone electron pair, uh, if, if uh, this were going to interact with an electron pair acceptor, you can see that it would have to do so in a direction that is perpendicular to the plane of the water molecule, something would have to come in um, along this axis, this long axis here, in order to interact with this electron lone pair. And in contrast, let's look at the other lone pair, number five, uh, under surfaces, molecular orbitals, and then number five here. Uh, this one lies in the same plane as the hydrogens and it, it, um, it points out in a direction that is coincident, coincident with a two-fold axis of, of symmetry axis of rotation for the water molecule. And so it has um, some, um, contributions from the oxygen P orbital as well as the oxygen S orbital. They mix together in forming uh, this non-bonding uh, lone pair of electrons that is spatially quite distinct from lone pair number four that we looked at in the listing. This is the one numbered five in the listing that has oxygen S and P character, and it's a beautiful lone pair on the oxygen. And now you can see that once you have gotten a wave function using a quantum chemical package like ORCA, you can then use the natural bond orbital program to essentially reconstruct the same, the same density um, using uh, maximally localized orbitals that give you a lot of meaningful chemical insight uh, in contrast uh, to what is often the case when looking at canonical molecular orbitals. So uh, we've taken this process all the way from building a structure in Molden, optimizing it using the good opt routine, Optimi taking the optimized structure and calculating it using hybrid density functional theory to get a high quality wave function to serve as the input to the natural bond orbital program and we ran gen NBO and the results now we can investigate visually uh, using the, the nice Java program JMOL for representing these functions. So that's a lone pair of the water molecule.